Welcome to the talk show for high-paid web developers. This is the David Conley Show. Even around the world from PCRadioNetwork.com. And here's the man with the plan, David Conley. Well, greetings, brothers and sisters of the planet Earth. You're listening to the David Connolly Show, coming at you from dcradionetwork.com. It's good to have you here. You are so welcome. It has been an incredibly eventful past few days in the web development universe. Now, that Skype noise was just me. Don't worry about it. It was just me. We have a live chat room on the website and we have a Skype chat room. If you come to the site just now, dcradionetwork.com, there is a live video stream and you can see this hideous room that I'm in just now. Uh, so come, al- come along, take the trip, and uh, hopefully later on I may be taking one or two calls. In the meantime, um, I wanted to just say a few words about the situation with Code Igniter. Yesterday at 3 a.m., I got the message saying that uh, Ellis Lab are putting Code Igniter up for adoption. Uh, that's the phrase, at least, that people are using. Um, and, you know, the vibe is basically they are looking for a new uh, owner. This is Ellis Lab, the people who make Code Igniter, or at least the people who own Code Igniter. Um, they are uh, now looking for a new owner. Uh, they don't feel as if it fits in their current business model. And pretty much the whole com- <laughs> Code Igniter community has gone a bit crazy. At this news. Um, so I thought I would give a little perspective on it now that we've had a wee bit of time to digest what has happened and I want to really put this in the context of not only the web development scene as a whole but even the kind of economy and everything as a whole because you know something folks all these things are linked. I'm going to go over the the kind of implications of this, what this means and how we should respond as web developers, especially if you are a CodeIgniter developer, someone who has maybe used CodeIgniter or uses it from time to time. I'm certainly in that category. The big question that everyone is asking right now is, now that CodeIgniter is dead, where are we going to go? That's at least the big question I'm hearing. Uh, And on the Insider Club forum, we're having a discussion about this just now. Uh, And it seems to be the question on everyone's mind. So now that CodeIgniter's dead, where do we go? Do we go to Laravel? Do we go to Symfony? Ye? Fuel? All of these frameworks are being talked about just now and everyone's eager to find out what the next framework is going to be. Well, let me give you my take on this, folks. Code Igniter, first of all, first of all, let's get a sense of perspective here, okay? All that has happened is that the company behind Code Igniter have said... Sorry about these strange noises. I have alerts on my computer. Um, the company behind Code Igniter have said, "Look, we're not into this anymore. We, you know, and we're looking for a new owner. That's it, okay?" So there's a couple of things to remember here. First of all, the owners of Code Igniter, Ellis Lab, have not said, you know. To hell with the whole project, it's over, goodbye. They have acted in an entirely uh, kind of responsible way here. You know, they've just said, look, it doesn't fit in with our business model, and this is what we're going to do. And 
I think that I, I don't actually agree with that uh, opinion Ellis Lab have made. I think it's a poor uh, opinion that they've made decision. Sorry, folks. I've been coding all day, can you tell? And last night as well, and the night before. So if I sound a bit slow, this is what happens when you do too much PHP. Um, the... I don't actually think Ellis Lab have made a great decision here. In fact, I think that it's, uh, it's, it's incredible that they never figured out how to monetize CodeIgniter. Now, let me give you guys the vibe. Let me tell you something that you already know. You know, we all like the open source vibe and we all like being able to get things for free and all that. It's cool and long may that continue. But you see, when you have a project that's completely free with no funding from anywhere, no source of income, you only need to look at CodeIgniter to see what happens. Okay? Now, there is another end to the spectrum. The other end is, well, if you actually, um, if you start charging people tons of money to go near the thing, you can kind of over-commercialize things, and that becomes uncool, and it also makes the community shrink considerably, I'm sure. I think a good example of a framework, a PHP framework, that's been over-commercialized is Zend. And I was talking... Uh, recently about how I remember trying the Zen framework and I signed up for the mailing list and within three days I had been pitched for £17,000 worth of stuff, web development stuff, servers, you know, um, all sorts of courses, certification, um, IDEs, you know, 17 donuts worth of stuff within three days. I mean, it was just ridiculous, you know. And it was a bit of a turn-off, and, and I just think that's uncool. So, you go if you go too cheap, the thing goes under. If you go too expensive, that's uncool. But you see, folks, there is a middle ground. There is a middle ground of coolness where we can all be kind of happy. And a good example of a company who have found the middle ground is Sensio. Sorry about my little Skype noise. I, I have the Skype room open. I don't know if any of them are even listening. Sensio, the people behind Symphony, they have managed to find that perfect middle point. How do they make their money? Well, let's get this vibe clear. They give the framework out for free. They give you the documentation for free, they give you access to the community, etc, etc, etc. But they have conferences, certification, you can have expert support, you can have all this cool stuff if you want it for a nominal fee. And they are doing pretty well. Have you seen the kind of prices that people are paying to go for conferences these days? Have you seen the kind of prices that people are paying for certification? Have you? Have you seen the kind of prices people are paying Fabian, the guy from Symphony, for a day's worth of consultation? He was charging 3,000 euros per day. Why can't Ellis Lab do that? Why can't they learn from the Sensio Labs model which no one is complaining about, no one's saying they're uncool, right? Why can't they do that and have that commercial aspect funding the progression of CodeIgniter? So I think that that's what should have happened. I wish I had been involved in the CodeIgniter project because that's how I would have been pushing things and I think it would have been cool. I don't think the community are hostile to the idea of an honest commercial enterprise, you know? So, it's just, to me, it's just unfortunate that they couldn't do this for some perplexing reason. They, they couldn't monetize. It, it's just madness. There must be about 20, 30,000 maybe code igniters, 
doing this professionally on the planet Earth based on looking at forums and stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm sure plenty of them would have been delighted to have attended a conference or to have done some sort of certification course or paid for additional support or something like that. Why, oh why, did Ellis Lab not think of these things? I have to tell you folks, I was out yesterday and I was actually thinking about this and I thought maybe I could actually make an offer to Ellis Lab. Now I know it sounds deluded but I thought well hang on, I, I, I could be wrong but I don't see anyone, I, I can't see any prospect of anyone uh, paying a fortune, resurrecting it and all that and making it this incredible framework again. I just cannot see it happening. And that's not because it's, I don't think Codeignite is a good brand. I think it is, you know. I think we have a lot to be thankful for as far as Codeigniter goes, you know. Thank you. Ellis Lab, why they never managed to monetize it, I haven't got a clue. I, I don't see any prospect of someone paying a huge amount of money. And I thought yesterday, maybe I could do this myself. Because um, I, I don't want to sound cocky, but I probably could give them a reasonable bid in terms of cash, you know. I'm sure I could. Um, I think that I've got a reasonable footprint on the web. Uh, and I've... Although I don't have the technical ability, and let me stress that, folks, I really don't have the technical ability to take on something like that myself, I do have contacts who are really, really great developers. And I thought, maybe this is something that I could do. In the end, I decided I'm probably not going to do that. Now, this could change. I'm going to keep an eye on things, right? Keeping a close eye on things, actually. But at the moment... I don't think I'm going to make any offer because, well, there's a few reasons, but one of the main reasons is, you know, I headed to the Code Igniter discussion forum yesterday and, you know, I don't want, I don't like talking about the negative folks. Uh, I, I don't like, sorry, let me rephrase. I don't like focusing on the negative, comma, folks, right? I don't want to be focusing on the negative, but that forum is the most venomous community I have ever encountered anywhere on the web. You know, as soon as I headed into that forum yesterday, there was a guy there, and I won't say his name, but let's just say that he has well over 2,000 posts on the forum. This is an established member of the forum. I guess you could say a heavyweight someone at the top of the food chain. And you know what he had as his forum signature? It said, STOP! In red, right? In red, and I think it was capital letters. And then it said something like, What were you trying to achieve? Blah, 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 blah. Have you read the manual or something? Words to those effect. This is how people are actually nicking about that forum. And if you don't believe me, go and check it out. I have never seen a more hostile forum in the history of my life. This is the kind of place where people are intimidated. And quite frankly, I think some of the, the regulars of that forum get their power by putting beginners down, by making them feel bad. Let me tell you guys something. About two years ago, I had some really heavy deadlines, tons of work and tons of stuff to get through and it was with Codeigniter and it was heavy and I thought, man, I need, a, I need a hand with this. And I headed to that Codeigniter forum and I actually hired the heavyweights. I use the plural, folks. I use the plural. I hired the heavyweights and I said, listen, guys, I have this site, that site, this project and that project. Uh, any chance you could give me a hand and I'll pay you, you know, this much. Thank you very much. So, 
I hired the guys. And you know something? As soon as you took them away from that cozy forum community, as soon as you took them into a real world situation, folks, they could not code their way out of a paper bag. They were hopeless. Absolutely hopeless. As soon as you had, as soon as you had a, any sort of um, real challenge, you know, and I'm talking simple stuff, like they need the form to do this. Can you add a field that does that, you know? I can't remember the details of the project, but it would have been pretty standard stuff. Folks, they couldn't do it. One of the guys, even in the middle of it, he just said, you know what, I'm not feeling well, I'm sick, and he just left, okay? Uh, I think he actually got paid as well, but just basically walks, you know? And in the end, I had to fire them because they were hopeless. Now, the funny thing is, if I was in a room with those guys and we were all chatting, you would be saying, man, they're the heavyweights. Gee, they know all of this stuff. And, you know, man, this is awesome. But the funny thing is, you know, I'm always talking about the difference between a commercial developer and a kind of forum developer who hangs about discussion forums, telling people to go and read the manual. So that's what happened. Um, and, you know, I, I had some pretty rubbish experiences in the forum. I won't go into them all. But in the end... I was pretty much, uh, you know, I went into exile because it, it was ridiculous. Um, and if I'm entirely honest, I felt as if there was some jealousy because uh, these people, quite frankly, are flat broke. They, they can hardly afford a toaster. And when they see a guy like uh, me coming on and, you know, selling sites for five-figure sums and all that, they can't actually handle that, you know? So uh, I had a hard time at that forum. Uh, I'll give you one other funny story. I remember the, the guy, I don't know if I like giving names here, but I'll, I'll give you enough to figure out who the guy is, right? But I remember the guy who invented HMVC was on the forum. And I was just learning this stuff and I asked him for some help. And this was like probably about three or four years ago. And I said, hey, could you just explain how to blah, blah, blah. And this was something basic. I mean, it would have been a question like, how do you call a module or some, something really basic. And I just needed some help. Maybe it was installation. I don't know. And I asked the guy and his answer was just like, Check the documentation, yeah, you know. And then I got back and I said, actually, I didn't get back. I headed to his website, gave him a donation because he had this pay now thing. I thought, right, I'm not going to hang about and be the pain in the neck questioning guy. I'll give him a donation. Now, it wasn't a massive donation, but I gave him $50, right? $50 is enough to warrant asking a question, right? So I gave the guy a donation, headed back to the forum, and I said, listen, I'm sorry to bother you again. Uh, I, you know, I think you're doing a great job, and just to let you know, I've just given you a little cash donation there. I was just wondering if you could clarify, blah, 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 blah. The guy basically said, it's in the guide. I've already told you, if you don't like it, hit the bricks. This is the kind of place that the Code Igniter forum is, folks. And that's why I left that forum and eventually I decided, eventually I thought, you know what? I'm going to start my own forum. I'm going to build an entirely new community and this new community is only going to have one rule. And the rule is, never tell anyone to go read the manual. Because 
quite frankly, I, I think that's a terrible thing to say. Do these people not realise that sometimes the manual sucks? Sometimes, the, in fact, have we ever read a good manual? Has anyone ever picked up a manual for anything, even out with the realms of web development, and it's actually been good? I don't think so. The manual generally sucks. Having said that, the Code Igniter manuals could be an exception. That was good. But generally in web development, the manual sucks. So these people who drift around forums and check it out, don't take my word for it. Head to the Code Igniter forum and look at the posters. Look at their signatures. They're all saying, don't ask me till you check Google. Have you read the manual? Stop! Big red letter. This is their signatures. This is what follows them around. What a terrible, poisonous vibe. And that, folks, is the reason why I'm not making a bid with Ellis Lab. Because I'm not being cocky here. But I can afford to make a bid. I can afford to submit a reasonable bid. And I was giving it serious thought yesterday. I even discussed it with a couple of people. A big loud motorbike's just gone by outside. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I, I can make an offer, and I think it would be a good offer. But in the end, I decided, you know what? I don't want anything to do with that community. And if I did ever take over, or, you know, the, the kind of branding, or take ownership of that, and if, if that transaction went ahead, well, I would have to chuck those people out, quite frankly, and that would make me even more unpopular. So that's kind of the vibe. Now, where does this leave us Code Igniter developers? What do we do now? Well, let me give you my own take on this. I said just the other day on the in the Insider Club discussion forum, and it's funny because I said this about 24 hours before the Ellis Lab announcement. I said, listen, I have no allegiance to any particular framework or any particular technology. And that's kind of cool. I'm glad I said that actually before this thing happened. And I don't think you should have any allegiance to any particular framework or company or anything like that. Clients don't really care about what framework you use. All they care about is results, okay? So that's point A. Now secondly, in terms of point B, which framework shall we go to next? You know, what one shall it be? Well, let, let me give you my take on it. First of all, Code Igniter is not broken. Even at this point in time, in my own humble opinion, it's the best framework out there. The syntax is really easy to use, it's modular, it has a massive community, and it's rock solid. It's been tested, you know, inside out. I still think Code Igniter is an awesome framework. I've actually built two Code Igniter sites since the Ellis Lab announcement. So I'm continuing, it's cool. But, and by the way, when I'm building sites, I'm giving people a two year guarantee. I, I don't think that's affected by this. But what we are saying here, and I think this is pretty much a reasonable thing to say, is that this is probably a good idea to start thinking about having a web development career that is independent of Code Igniter. So this is a good time to start thinking about, okay, well, you know, maybe not next week or anything or next month, but let's say a year. In a year from now, I think it would be, you know, not an ideal situation to still be using Code Igniter, okay? But we can relax because it's not gonna break. You know, maybe they will find an owner and everything's cool, but I would say it's the time to start thinking about something else. Uh, and as I say, by this time next year, I would really be thinking it's a good idea to have other technologies in place instead of Code Igniter. Now, 
You're asking what technology to go for, what framework. Well, let me tell you guys something that you don't want to hear, okay? Have you ever listened to an interview by a guy like Fabian, um, I hope I have his name right, is it Petoncier, I'm not sure, the guy from Symphony, the inventor of Symphony, have you ever heard him speak at a conference or anything? You know, you can go on YouTube and check this stuff out, okay? Now, he's one of the top PHP guys. You go to YouTube and have a listen to him. Just listen for three minutes. Now, same applies for guys like Taylor Otwell. There's interviews with him. Go have a listen. These are the top PHP people. You go check them out. And check out the kind of things they're talking about. And what you will find, I'm speaking to 99% of the web development community here, what you will find is that they are talking an entirely different language. It's hieroglyphs, folks. They are talking about some seriously advanced stuff that the vast majority of the rest of us haven't got a clue what it even means. Now I'm going to tell you something about web development, okay? When you've been doing this for 17 years, and I have been doing this for 17 years, okay? And by the way, that doesn't mean I'm technically great because I spent a lot of time doing SEO and other things, right? But generally I've been involved in professional website building for 17 years. Now, when, when that happens and you start doing things across deep time, a couple of interesting things happen, folks. You notice that web development works in cycles. And there are four-year cycles in the, in the land of web development. Now, this is my experience, and it's the experience of others who I've worked with, some of whom have been involved in the industry even longer than me. So, you know, if we forget about Code Igniter for a second, right, what I'm saying is professional web developers tend to have a four-year cycle and it just keeps going and going and going, okay? And the way it works is this. Year one is a learning year. Think about when you first got into web development. What was the first year like? Now, maybe you managed to sell a few websites. That's great. I'm very happy. Maybe you managed to build a couple of nice apps. Fantastic. But my bet is that the first year you got into web development, you were probably spending a lot of time learning. In fact, probably so much so that it pretty much hindered your ability to earn any vast amount of money. So you have this year of learning, right, before you really start making money. And then after you've gone through this learning process, you have three years of earning, you know. And then after the three years of earning have came to an end, the cycle repeats, you go back to one year, one year of learning again. So it's a year of learning and three years of earning, okay? So when I first got into PHP, and by the way, I was one of the first people in Europe to get into PHP, right? Uh, before I got into PHP, that was a big deal. It took me pretty much a year to get a grip of this. Maybe I'm a slow learner, but it took a year for me to build all of the stuff, the online shops and all that, and to build up the footprint and learn the technologies and to start getting phone calls and making a living. That, that took one year, right? And then I had a time where I was earning and everything was going great. But folks, this was before PHP had OOP. <laughs> I almost said OAP, old age pensioner. Object-oriented features. PHP didn't always have that. So we were using an old system called Procedural. 
programming, right? You've probably heard that phrase. And then I can remember, um, I can't remember the year. It was probably about 2003 or something like that. Uh, possibly 2003, I think. But the announcement came, PHP now has object-oriented programming. Ding, 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 ding. And I remember having to change everything. I mean, I had to take time out and come, you know, had to suddenly learn about classes and all sorts of different ways of structuring sites. And basically, I had to take a year out to completely relearn all of this stuff. Now, I was doing some work. I was paying the rent and I was functioning as a professional developer, but a large portion of time was spent just learning. So then I learned all of that stuff. And then I made some cash with that, lasted about three years. And then somewhere along the line, the Zend framework appeared. And I just ignored it. I thought, I'm not interested. And then other frameworks appeared. Cake appeared and some others, blah, blah, blah. And it became so big that it couldn't really be ignored. And I thought, man, I'm going to have to learn some frameworks. So again, all of the code basically got ripped up. Frameworks became the thing. And it took me a year to kind of get a grip of that. And then after the learning season, back into earning again, right? So the point I'm making, folks, we have these cycles. You learn and you earn. Uh, all right, we have some a flurry of bleeps from the room here. You guys are kind of quiet today, by the way. Uh, let, let me have a little read here. I think it's a small audience today, folks, but... Um, Thanks for the comments, very interesting stuff. Thanks for sharing your experience. Reminds me of S2, someone saying releases, blah, 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 right, okay. Now, let me get back to where I was. Everyone is asking, everyone, at least in the Code Igniter community, what shall we learn now? Seems to be lots of people jumping on board Laravel. I see people in the Insider Club talking about Fuel and all the various other frameworks. You, you want to know what I'm learning, folks? I'm learning PHP. Now, there's something that you probably haven't thought about. But actually, let me give you guys a thought here, right? You know, when you hear a guy like... Symphony guy, Fabian or Fabian, and he's talking about all this stuff, you know, talking about stuff that we haven't got a clue, you know, it's just, it's like another language. Let me ask you this. Are you the kind of person who thinks it's reasonable to just say, oh, well, that's him. It's not, you know, that's his problem, all that stuff. I'm just, you know... I'm just some consumer on the sidelines. You see, folks, I actually don't think that's a reasonable thing for a professional web developer to think. It's kind of like this. You know, I have these terrible fillings in my teeth, you know, and the kind of metallic... And if I was a singer, it would be terrible because if you open your mouth, it's these big steel fillings, right? And they must have gone in, gee, a few years ago. But since then, new technologies have arrived. They now have fillings for your teeth, folks, which are white and very similar to natural teeth. Now, if you headed to a dentist and he said, listen, I'm going to have to give you a filling, and you said, cool, is this going to be one of the nice new white fillings? The new modern, super cool fillings? If that dentist turned around and said, well, actually, we don't know about that stuff. We just do the old, ugly fillings. What would you think of that dentist? And imagine if the dentist said, 
You know, imagine if you said, but look, there's another dentist down the road and they know all about these new technologies and they've got people looking, you know, as if they came from Hollywood and they've got nice teeth and they've got all the latest techniques and all that. Why haven't you got this stuff? Imagine if the dentist just said, well, they know about that, but I actually didn't bother to learn about that stuff. What would you think of that dentist, folks? Do you think you'd want that guy doing some work on I mean, there's no chance. You would be out of there like a bat out of hell. It's the same with web development. It's the same with web development. You think you know PHP? All right. Well, let me... Let me um, run a couple of things past you guys here, right? Okay. Do you know what UML is? If I was to say what's UML, do you know what that is, what it means? Do you know what a static class is? What is a static class? Hmm. What's an interface? In terms of PHP, what does the word interface mean? What does a facade mean? Do you have any ideas? What about namespaces? Do you know what that word means? Have you used namespaces? Are you familiar with that stuff? How about design patterns? Do you know what design patterns are? Have you heard that phrase? Have you used any design patterns? Can you name two, in fact not even two, can you name one design pattern? Can anyone? Do you know what the Gang of Four is or who the Gang of Four are? Are you familiar with their book? What about unit testing? Do you know about unit testing? Do you know how to do a unit test? Do you even know what that phrase means? Do you know what a singleton means? <laughs> I'm just laughing. I have, I have Yava in the room typing like crazy. I think he does know what all of this stuff means. <laughs> um, okay. I'm speaking to the general population, clever clogs. Let's carry on. Do you know what curl is? Do you know how to run a cron job? Hmm. What technologies do you use to handle encryption these days? If it's MD5, then that's not good. Now, folks, if you're listening to any of these things and you're saying, I don't know what these things are, or if you're in any doubt about these things, then it's time to learn. Okay? I have a lot of action in Skype here. Everyone's talking about the various technologies. It's actually quite a clever crowd here. I don't think I caught anyone out. But I know that some of you folks are listening and you're thinking, well, what does that mean? What does it mean when you hear a guy like Taylor Rockwell talking about a facade. What does that actually mean? You know, what does it mean when they talk in page one of the symphony manual about kernels? What does all that stuff mean? Folks, if you are not sure about the answers to these things, if you don't know what these things mean, then I would suggest that instead of looking for the next framework, you should go back to learning PHP. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that you know how to make classes and do database calls and all that stuff, okay? But if you are to make any sort of intelligent decision about what framework to use, I think it would be helpful if we could at least listen to the top developers and know what on earth they are talking about. So, I would suggest 
that the intelligent course of action for CodeIgniter developers is to say, well, look, you know, CodeIgniter, regardless of the, you know, the Ellis Lab announcement, there are tons of people on the web saying CodeIgniter's dead. That cannot be a good thing. It's time to start thinking about becoming CodeIgniter independent. But actually, rather than leaping into some framework and not having a clue what's going on, I actually think it's a good idea to go back to basics, back to the PHP. When you listen to the symphony experts, the Zend experts and so on, when you talk to guys like Derek McLean, right? Fantastic Zen developer. The things that he is talking about when we go to the, the cafe, it's not the framework. He's talking about PHP, talking about the fundamentals of PHP, advanced PHP. I mean, can anyone tell me the differences between PHP 5.2 and 5.3, the main differences? Or how about the differences between 5.3 and 5.4? Do you know? Oh, you, you don't know, right, okay. Well, maybe it's time to have a year of learning, okay? And this can be a good process. And listen, I'm not trying to make anyone feel awkward. I'm not trying to make, I'm not trying to ask anyone to feel awkward or to uh, give up HMVC or anything. As far as the tutorials go, I'm probably going to finish those tutorials. That method of building a website that I've managed to do some tutorials on, it was designed to be fast, efficient, and modular. And that still applies. Nothing has changed. All I'm saying is, if you have any doubts, there's a lot of Skype activity here. I'll have a read of some of the comments in a minute. As I was saying, if you have any doubt about what these things are, what they mean, let's go back to PHP. And here is the news flash. You may find that if you actually go back to ground zero and you say, do you know what, I'm going to figure out all of this stuff. It's no longer acceptable to say, well, it's for somebody else to learn that. I'm raising the game. Listen, folks. When you hear someone talking about PHP, if you are a professional PHP developer, if you hear someone talking about PHP and there's something they talk about that you don't know what it is, right? They mention like a YAML file or something. My challenge to you is this. Don't say, well, it's their problem. Head away, take a note of what it was, and you find out what it was. How dare they know something that you don't know? How dare they? This is the industry that you are in. We are professional web developers. And to be entirely honest, I think it's time that we started raising our game in terms of learning about this stuff. So that's pretty much uh, the way I see things. And as I say, you may find, you may find at the end of all of this, that you end up just building your own framework. Last night I was out with a guy called David Matthews, who has a very successful web development company. And he actually uses his own framework. He uses PHP, right? But he won't go near any of the frameworks that we talk about. And he has his reasons to do with security and all sorts of stuff. Uh, he won't go near those frameworks, you know? because you know, all sorts of reasons. I saw him last night and he was like, yeah, I told you so, you know. But as I say, you may find that actually maybe that'll happen. Maybe if you go back to ground zero, let's say you say to yourself, right, I'm going to spend three months or even six months really learning the ins and outs of PHP. I'm going to be one of the guys who can have a conversation with the heavyweights. Now, maybe when you go down that road, Maybe you'll turn around and say, do you know what? Symphony 2, here we go. On the other hand, maybe you'll say a Laravel or something else. But at least let's make an informed decision. So my advice is to go back to basics. Don't panic. Stay cool. 
go back to basics and let's have a year of learning, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm probably going to continue this on the, the next show, let me just see what's happening in the room. Um, the room is kind of quiet, hang on a second, I have all sorts of chat rooms and everything. A few people watching on video I can see. Uh, all right, cool. What we're seeing in the room here, there's not too much action, if I'm honest. It's a bit quiet. Um, okay, someone's saying, do we have to go back to basic? Well, you know. <laughs> Listen, I'm not being nostalgic. The trouble with nostalgia is it's not what it used to be. Um, okay, I have Yavo answering pretty much all of the questions that I've put out there in terms of those technologies. Man, we have an intelligent crowd here. Um, yeah, a few people in the room as well. Anyway, if you're listening to all of this and you're wondering what's going on, you can come and hang out with us as well. You're, in you're very welcome. Uh, just go to dcradionetwork.com. You'll see a link there for the Insider Club, okay? It's called the Insider Club. Come along, it's free of charge. There's free training there, free web development training. There's all sorts. There's a discussion forum, uh, and it's a good crowd. No one will ever uh, tell you to go read the manual. I guarantee that. It's a good crowd, very friendly. They know more about this than me, quite frankly, and you're very welcome to come on down. So it's at dcradionetwork.com. Click on the link for David's Insider Club. Anyway, I think I shall wrap it up for today. Thank you very much indeed for being here. Stay cool. And may the force be with us all. Bye.